plug in, plug in. I know Michelle was telling me there was bird feed. Yes, there was bird feed. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. We are so glad to have you here with us today. I want to share with you who all is here. Of course, I am Pastor Nicole Henderson Johns of Batavia Faith in Summerside at UMCs. And we have with us a Ruth. Uh, I'm praying for Ruth. She's sitting on a hard chair back there and her back's a little sore this morning. So prayers for her today. Uh, also, we have Tara, and many thanks for Tara doing an extra job this morning, uh, because Jessica isn't here with us, so Tara is going to be our Jessica as well as our Tara. Yay! I like that she's younger. 
she likes it. She's younger, so yes. Yeah, okay. We'll just call you Jess today, though. Okay. And we have Penny, who uh, disappeared downstairs with my kids, and she'll be back up. She's going to do our children's moment this morning. I think she went looking for something, and my children just followed along with her. Um, Ruth, can you turn the volume up on me just a little? It, yeah, just a little bit. And also, uh, of course, Ella and Joe are here, and they'll be sharing time this morning with all of you for our children's moment. Uh, everything good, Tara? Yeah. Okay. Yes, you no. got your prayer requests. Good. She's writing your prayer requests down. Please share those prayer requests with us this morning in the news feed. We would love to, um, or in the, the, the comment section, we would love to hear your requests and share those together so that we can all be in an attitude of prayer. This morning we have, speaking of prayer, we have some special prayers that were written by uh, Fort Smith First United Methodist Church. Um, and uh, these are prayers that I found for Inauguration Day. And so we're going to use a couple of those, adapt a couple of those for this morning as we prepare our hearts and minds for all that is going on in the world today. Also, make sure that you comment on our live stream to let us know that you are here. Share with us just a comment, a hello, a, a wonderful playing, Tara. Um, good to see you all, guys. Anything like that. We would love to see those comments just to let us know that you are here. Yes, Ella. Um, because we are Okay. Ella and Joe are fighting, so they need prayer requests. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I think Penny might need prayer. She's got both of them this morning and they're going to do whatever they're going to do. Uh, Penny needs some prayer to find whatever it is she is looking for. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I'm sharing with you guys what's going on in the room behind the camera. Um, also, uh, we would love to uh, we would love to hear your joys and your concerns, as well as to connect with you. This week, we have regularly scheduled programming as follows. Some, some things are changed, just to note. Um, youth group tonight is at 6 p.m., as it always is, so we will be glad to have our kids on Zoom and get to see them in that way uh, tonight at 6 p.m. Bible study is only Tuesday at 6 p.m., so if you are a regularly an 11 a.m. Bible study person, we are not meeting this week. Sorry for the inconvenience. We'll see you next week. Or you can join us at the 6 p.m. Bible study. That is also on Zoom. Our KFC Faith Kids is on Wednesday at 4.30 on Zoom, and we will be glad to uh, share some time with our kiddos then. We hope that all of the kids and all of your grandkids, and bring some extra kids, send them to the Zoom link. If you don't have the Zoom link for our youth group or for our children's program, please request it. We have kept this a private link so that we keep our kids and our families safe. So if you do not have that link and you have a kid that would like to participate or a youth would like to participate, please let one of us know. You know. Reach out to us via the Facebook page. Reach out to us personally. You can send me a message. You can send me a text message. You can send me anything of that sort, a carrier pigeon just for you, Scott. Uh, and we will be glad to share that, that Zoom link with you. As a reminder, we all share our faithfulness and show our faithfulness to God with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Uh, this week, I'm challenging us to be in prayer. Um, our bishop challenged us to be in prayer this week because this is the week of Christian unity, uh, the 18th through the 25th. I think it is the 18th or the 25th. Uh, our bishop reminded us that this is the week of Christian unity and we pray for unity. We pray for peace. We pray for togetherness. We pray for hope. We pray for, for God's mercy and grace. So this week as we pray, pray in earnest for that. Pray for unity. Pray for all people in all places. Pray for unity amongst our households and, and amongst our communities. Pray for unity in all the different places. And you'll see that theme of uni Christian unity and unity in our message and service today. Uh, also, remember to, again, your presence here is your presence online and right now. And, and just share with us your presence. And we know that this is hard. We understand that it is very difficult to be connected in this way. Uh, but we just ask that uh, you hang on a little bit longer. It was released this week that Hamilton County is a purple level county, 
And so if you are living in Hamilton, I encourage you to stay home in all cases and all manners, except for the absolute necessities. Please stay home. Um, even if you're in Claremont County, I'm going to say that too. Uh, if you are in Claremont County, please stay home, except for the absolute necessities, the things that you absolutely positively cannot do without. If you need help in getting groceries or receiving things or anything of that sort, if you need help picking up an order or anything of that sort, please let us know and we will be glad to help you with that so that you can stay home and stay safe. Um, and uh, we say those things because I, I also have information that comes from, and we're going to share a little bit of COVID information that comes from our Claremont County Health Department and our uh, health partners, our community health partners, and they are, are saying the system is taxed to the max. Um, our hospitals in the greater Cincinnati area are at, at capacity and, and not just because of COVID, but because of other things as well. And we just want to make sure that everybody stays safe. And if you stay home, then you are not going to be exposing yourself to everybody else's germs. And we just we want to make sure everybody stays, stays safe, stays home, stays healthy. Also, um, on that note with COVID, uh, we posted a link on Facebook last night. I, I posted a link on Facebook last night. And it is the link for the information to receive the vaccine. The COVID vaccine is coming. Um, it is coming very slowly. I know the things that you hear on the news, I want you to just forget about that. Uh, because the news reports their own thing and they have a different spin on it. Uh, what I'm telling you comes directly from the health department and the hospitals. Now, what I am telling you is, if you are or know someone who is 80 years old and above, you have the opportunity to either register them online with the health department or book them appointment or book yourself an appointment on at one of the various different locations on that website. If you know someone who is above that age who does not have internet access, please reach out to them and ask them if you can book them an appointment because you do not have to be a family member. And I'm going to say that one more time. You do not have to be a family member or related to a person to book someone an appointment or to make them a reservation on the list. Okay. Uh, so you have, we can, this is where we can be neighbors. This is where we can be brothers and sisters in Christ and truly caring for one another because we have the opportunity to help those who are in that age bracket, even if they can't get online. Uh, the online forums are the best way to get information right now from the health department. Don't go to any of the other websites. Go directly to the health department because they have the most accurate and updated information. They are updating it regularly and they are making sure that they have the information. The thing that I want to, to the last thing I want to warn everybody of, there are vaccines. They are coming into our region. They are coming in very slowly. Um, our Claremont County Health Department is only getting uh, about 100 vaccines a week. Um, there are a lot more than 100 people who will fit into that age bracket. Um, there are other locations throughout our region that are getting vaccines, and we have the ability to tap into those, and, and, and people have the ability of getting those, but you just have to know where to look. So again, the health department is managed, helping to manage all of this and the distribution, so we're asking that you go to the health department's webpage. If you've heard anything different, I'm going to say ignore it. Okay, because I, I get this information directly from the health department. They're telling us to share this info, this specific information out. It's a little bit different than what is coming from the state health department. It's a little bit different than what's coming from the news. This is the information that you need to know. Um, if you are a person who is 70 plus, your time is coming soon. There is actually a schedule that I did post on that Facebook post that has information about what week each age group, each age bracket is going to be able to register for vaccines. Remember, this is only the first one in a series of two. So you will get the first round and then you will be on a list and you will be contacted, I believe, contacted for when the second one is available to you. Um, and it's about 20, 21 days between the two. So that it gives it about a month. So this is not a speedy process in any way, shape or form, 
the everybody is doing the best of their ability to make sure that everybody gets their their vaccines out and and going and happening and everybody gets them the best thing that you can do is make sure that you personally if you fit into one of those age brackets or one of your friends or family members fits into those age brackets that you register and you get connected with one of these locations that has the vaccines for distribution all of that being said don't forget that we are here to pray. We are here to be present. We are here to give back of our gifts, our tithes, our offerings, our service, ourselves to God. In the midst of all of this, we can still give our thanks to God. We can still give the opportunity of being grateful to God. We can still worship. We can still praise. We can still be together in, in different and new ways. So as we are called to all of these things of prayer, presence, gift, service, and witness, I want to turn us to turn our hearts and minds to prayer. And uh, as I said, we're, we're doing a prayer that I didn't write, so I'm going to read it for us this morning. Let us pray. God of all the ages. In your sight, nations rise and fall, and pass through times of peril. Now when our land is troubled, be near to judge and save. May leaders lead by your wisdom. May they search your will and see it clearly. If we have turned from your way, reverse our ways and help us to repent. Give us your light and your truth. Let them guide us through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of this world and our Savior. Amen. And that comes, that prayer comes to us from the Presbyterian Worship Book USA. With that, Penny, would you share with us our children's moment this morning? She texted me. She said, do you have a children's moment? I said, not yet. And she said, I've got one. Great. Can you guys look at the chair? Oh, I'm going to show you all about that. So grab a chair. Yeah. Okay. Well, I need a cheat sheet, unlike the pastor who knows how to do all this stuff. So, um, mm. oh, I love this picture. Can I see? I'm looking, yeah, in a minute, I'm looking at someone that God says is very special. I like this picture. Ella, would you like to look at, a pic your, at the picture? Uh -huh. But now you can't, you got to promise you won't tell anybody who you see in that picture. <gasps> who is Look at that. Now I'm going to let you see in a minute, Joe. Look at that. Now this person is very special too. How about you, Joe? Now don't tell anybody that what the picture says. Mm -hmm. Okay. Joe can't. Joe didn't see. Yeah. Joe didn't see in the man. Joe didn't see. Uh huh. So, Joe didn't see. What's that? Joe didn't see in it. You didn't see the picture. You didn't Joe see. Joe didn't. Joe didn't. Well, the person that we see in there is like nobody else. Now, let's see. The person that Joe saw had dark hair and dark eyes. But now the person that Ella saw had blonde hair and light eyes. And the person I saw had white hair and dark eyes. And you guys, you saw a short person. When I saw a tall person, we won't talk about weight, okay? Never talk about weight. But that's what we saw. No, but, no, can you but no matter who we saw, God thinks that person is so special, doesn't he? That's me. Does, does God think? That, that was uh -huh. me with Does God think you're special? Uh-huh. That's me. Yes, he does. That's Yes. My mommy. They're, yes. Yeah, my They're all very mommy. special. But you know, Monday, no. we're celebrating somebody's birthday. <coughs> and I don't know if you guys, you might not know who this is, but this is a, a gentleman that's named, his name is Martin Luther King Jr. And we're celebrating his birthday on Monday. I know his name. Do, have you heard of him? Uh-huh. So uh -huh. now, you now, told me his name, so I know that's Martin Luther King. Now, he was a great man. He was a preacher. And he helped our country to realize how wrong it is not to like somebody just because the way they look. 
So that was very wise of him, wasn't it? He, he, that's a white hand. So he believed God wanted us to love people. Now he had a dream that all people would get along no matter what their color, their skin. That was his dream. Now God told us what Martin Luther King said was special. Uh -huh. Thank you. Well, we'll put that right here. So God says it's what's, we're special because of what's on the inside, not what's on the outside. Now, uh -huh, we're going to look at those in a minute. Now in Samuel, 1 Samuel, Are we going to we're going to look at our Bibles. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says that, let me find this here. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or his height, how tall he is, because I don't care about that. God, Lord says he looks on, he looks on this. What does God look at? God looks, uh -huh, thank you. God looks at the heart. He doesn't look on the outside. So God looks on the heart. We're going to look at this in a minute. Now, Dr. Martin Luther King was a pastor, kind of like Mom. Like, oh. Yes, he had a church just like Mom. And he taught that Jesus loves black people, white people, people of all sizes, short people, tall people. It didn't matter. And, and, and he liked my skin color. Yes, he liked white people and dark people. But then also in Galatians 5.14, it said... In our Bibles, for the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love everyone like yourself. Do we love everyone like we should? Yeah, so now I like Emma. She's, she's, she is very special to me. And my lion is. Okay, so that's what, and my other one. So that's what Dr. Martin Luther King said. We should love everyone. And Jesus said that too. Jesus said we should love everyone like ourselves. So now now, here's, here's two eggs. Now, what's this one? Don't, what is this one? What color? Um, it's a dark egg, isn't it? And what color is this one? White. It's a white egg. Now, which one would you, do you like the best? I like this one. Okay, okay good. All righty. So, uh, that's good. Now, now this, let's ask you, let me ask you this question. Does God like Ella better than Joe? He likes, no, he likes both of us. He loves both of you, doesn't he? God doesn't have favorites, does he? He loves everyone. So, so and then do, do these eggs look different on the outside? Uh -huh. They do, don't they? Uh -huh. So can you crack them? Yeah, we will in a minute. They look different on the outside, but you know, Jesus doesn't care what we look at like on the outside. We can be this dark brown, we can be white, we can be any color. And Jesus still loves us, doesn't he? Sometimes I do. So let's see. Oh, there's one, there's the dark one. Let's see what the white one looks like. Oh, they look the same on the inside. So it doesn't matter if you're dark on the outside or you're white on the outside. We look the same on the inside, don't we? Yeah, I like the goo. You like those? So, God doesn't see our outside. He only sees our heart, doesn't he? What's on the inside. Mm -hmm. So today, we can have a dream just like Martin Luther King did. And remember, to look at the heart, not, not how we're different on the outside. Okay, that's our that's our children's moment. Thank you. Now, we, can, we can whip those up later. <laughs> now we can go down. We 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 gotta wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. Tara, can you adjust the screen or did you already?
I tilted it down for the kids a little bit. Ish, kind of, sort of. Okay, we'll, we'll go with it. I'll adjust it in a second. Uh, this morning we have, I know, several prayer requests and joys. Uh, prayers for uh, Linda Coffee, Coffee, who will have surgery next week, probably, and that's Penny's sister. So prayers for her, and she is, she has been admitted to the hospital. They did admit her. They sent her home. So she's talking to the surgeon Monday, and they're going to schedule the surgery. So okay, so she's home, but she's she is home. having to have surgery. Yeah. Um, prayers also for Wesley, Wesley, and his daughter Lily, who are uh, people who need help and, and need uh, prayers and just to love. They are uh, folks that called into the church earlier this week. Um, prayers also for Pam Quartz, who's having her kidney transplant on Tuesday. We pray for her if you are able and willing and, and have any desire to give a meal to the, the family. We would certainly be able to connect you and I'm going to say contact Maggie directly because she's got all the information. Sorry, Maggie. <laughs> uh, other prayer requests. Tara, you've got a list from Facebook this morning. I do. Rebecca Keys asks for prayers for her friend who has suffered a broken hip. So prayers for Becky Key's friend with a broken hip. The White House would like prayers for our country. Prayers for our country. And Jan Cheney's cousin Tammy passed away. So prayers for the Doan family. Prayers for the Donan? Doan. Doan family. Uh, on the passing of Tammy. And um, Maurice and Roseanne enjoy my prayer move. Prayers of Thanksgiving for Tara's prayer. And Sue Fraley's dad is getting his shot, his COVID shot on Thursday. So Wonder. prayers for him. And Maggie um, has would ask for sympathy prayer for a former neighbor's family for the passing of 87 year old Julie. So I think Karen. And prayers for Kevin Bear, who is still in ICU but improving. And Kathy Lucas is home but still dealing with COVID. And prayers for 25 year old wife and mother, Molly Chapel, who is in critical care due to COVID. And she really enjoyed the children's moment that Penny put. So prayers of thanksgiving for Penny, and we need to be in prayer for all of those people that <laughs> Tara just listed and the families who have lost loved ones. And Deanna's brother, Mark, is having open heart surgery tomorrow. And her dad is also in the hospital recovering from heart issues, plus he has uh, prostate, kidney, and bladder problems. So prayers for Deanna's father and brother. Yes. And uh, Becky Beck is now dealing with the second, her family is dealing with the second round of COVID because of her eldest grandson's exposure. Yes. Prayers for Becky Becker's uh, oldest grandson uh, as he, I believe he was, he tested positive for COVID. Uh, so we pray for, for that family and, and quarantine because there's a lot of them in one little house. So prayers for them. Ruth, I know you've got some others. Thanks, Tara. Yes, um, Ray's having surgery on Tuesday on his bladder. So I just pray for him. So prayers for Ray Chase. Uh, Tuesday he is having surgery on his bladder, and we just pray for good results and, and good uh, quick and speedy recovery. And Gladys Lyon wants to thank all of us who provide the worship service. Thank you to, to you for watching uh, a worship and, and being a part of our worship. We do this uh, so that you guys can have an opportunity to worship. So we're, we are happy to be here and glad to be here today and every Sunday. Others, any other joys or concerns? I want to pray that everyone should realize God is in control. Yes. And instead of worrying so much, get it off of yourself and give it to God. His shoulders are big. I do have a joy. 
Raymond's birthday is tomorrow. He's going to be 32. Raymond's birthday is tomorrow. He's going to be 32. And so we give thanks and praise for his birthday. Yeah. And I think we missed a couple of birthdays this past week. But thanks to all those who have birthdays and praise to all those who have birthdays. Uh, we celebrate with all of you. Uh, even if we don't mention you, we're, we're still celebrating you. We all get the little reminders in our calendars that <laughs> you have birthdays. So, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I realized why the volume isn't right. Can you pull that down just a little bit? Okay, maybe we try that a little bit better. It's muted. That's why it wasn't working. <laughs> It's one of those mornings, not enough coffee yet this morning. Uh, we are going to pray our regular pastoral prayer as well as praying for prayers of intercession this morning. Again, this is part of the prayers from Fort Smith First United Methodist Church, and they've shared these prayers with us for, for prayer. So let us pray. Holy and gracious and loving God, we've lifted so many people and families and loved ones before you for your praise, for your, for your comfort, for your healing, for your grace, for your mercy. Lord, we know that all of these people we've named and these people we've kept within our hearts and minds need your love, your compassion, your care. They need your healing power and presence. They need your Holy Spirit poured upon. So God, we pray that you would be with each and every family, each and every person who we've lifted up and those we've kept within our hearts and minds. God, be with us in our weaknesses. Be with us in our pain, in our sorrow, in our anxiety, in our darkness. Be with us. Dwell in us. Give us your grace, your mercy, your comfort, your peace, your wisdom, your love, and your love. Lord, we also give you great thanksgiving and praise for all of the joys that you've given us. For the joys of music and of children. For the joys of birthdays, of anniversaries, of exciting moments in time. Of things that we can celebrate. God, we, we're grateful for, for kids who are successful in their sports teams. We're grateful for kids who are able to do their work and succeed and thrive even in the midst of these crazy circumstances. God, we're grateful for all that you have given us and all that you do. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless us with your love, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness. And Lord, we also intercede on the behalf of others. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers for President-elect Joe Biden, Dr. Jill Biden, and their family. For Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, Douglas M. Hoff, and their family. For President Donald Trump, Melania Trump, and their family. For Vice President Mike Pence, Karen Pence, and their family. For members of the United States Senate and their staff. For members of the United States House of Representatives and their staffs, and all of their families. For state and local government leaders and their families. For law enforcement officers, our military and their families. For reconciliation, for peace, for unity, for healing of our nation. For all those the Holy Spirit brings to our minds and our hearts. For all of these and so many more, we give you thanks and praise. And we ask for your blessing, your peace, your hope, your love, and your joy. These things we pray in the name of your Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, our crazies are going to give Miss Penny another break for a second so that she can do our, our scripture reading. Is that okay? Can she do that? We will come up. Okay, you're going to come right <laughs> We're going to have a good time today downstairs.
Good morning, everyone. Our scripture reading today is going to be from Genesis, the 22nd chapter, verses 15 through 18. If you want to turn in your Bibles, Genesis, 22nd chapter, 15 through 18. Now the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went to Beersheba, and Abraham lived at Beersheba. Again, that's Genesis 22, 15 through 18. And we're going to go downstairs. <laughs> Again, we pray for Miss Penny as she takes my kids downstairs. No, it'll be good for you. They're just not good for me. That's how it works. Junior Day uh, tomorrow, but also pays homage to the, what we're dealing with in our country and the divisiveness and divisions and, and those people over there and those people over there and I don't like them and I don't like them and I don't do that and da, 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 all that. So we're going to talk about that. But first we're going to talk about what it means to live in a global society in a post-Christian world. And that's really what we're, where we are. Uh, this uh, current time that we have, that we're living in right now, is, is considered to be a post-Christian world. That kind of doesn't sound right, does it? Because we're Christians, so it can't be post-Christian because that means after a Christian. But that's really the time that we're living in. We're living in a post-Christian world. So how do we as a church continue to thrive? as the church continued to thrive in a post-Christian society that is so global-focused. Now, first of all, I want to talk about that global society piece. Now, when you turn on your television set or when you turn on your, your Facebook feed or you open your phone and you look at the news feed, um, <clears throat> all of those things, have you noticed that more and more and more and more there's breaking news? Jimmy Fallon did a little skit about breaking news. He said uh, it was in his go on get skit. And he wanted breaking news to go on and get. And I agree with him because breaking news, if it weren't breaking, it wouldn't be news, right? All news is news. News is news. It, it, all news is breaking news. That's kind of the concept of news. If it's not breaking, if it's not like new and exciting, then, then it's yesterday's newspaper. I mean, it's, it's not even, it's almost like it's repetitive saying breaking news. But there's so much breaking news. We get so much news information. And it's not just from here. We used to be able to just know like what was going on in our own communities. And maybe every, you know, week or two weeks, you'd get a newspaper from the big city. But now we get news at our fingertips immediately as it happens. As people were storming the Capitol, what were we doing? We were seeing it as it happened. Think back to 9-11. As planes were flying into buildings, we were seeing it as it happened. 
not reading about it later. As wars erupt and, and things happen in the Middle East, and in, in Africa, in Asia, in Russia, in wherever things happen, we see it as it happens. We put reporters in, in war zones and they stand there with the bombs flying overhead. We see it as it happens. That's what it means to live in a global society. We see everything happening while it's happening <clears throat> and not after the fact. So that creates an increase and a rise in tensions and animosity towards the other, whomever the other is. It creates issues and problems looking at them or those people, whatever them or those people or other means to us. So that's what it means to live in a global society. There are benefits from living in a global society. We get the benefits of, you know, having foods that are international foods and, and uh, really exciting celebrations from other places around the world. There's, there's great things that happen with a global society. But quite often it leads to negative things. <clears throat> Now, what about this post-Christian world? Kerry Newolf is a founding pastor of Conexus Church. He's an author and a leadership speaker. He studies church trends and he shares his knowledge via speaking engagements and books and blogs. And um, he has a really good, good blog that I've, I've looked at a few times. And he shares trends that he expects to see each year with his readers. Things that he, he kind of projects are going to happen in the church, in the life of the church. Not just small church or his church, but the global church. Well, more like the, the church in the United States. It's more talking just about us over here. But the, the, the national picture of what will church look like, regardless of denomination, regardless of non-denominational status or anything like that. But he looks at all of church and kind of says, this is what he thinks will happen. And for 2021, he has eight projections. I'm not going to share all of those with you, but I'm going to share a couple of them with you. He says these things. The majority, first, the majority of attenders may no longer be in the room, citing that an average in-person attendance post-quarantine will be 36% of what was before COVID. Now think about that. You know how many people were in church before COVID? Not just here, not just at Summerside, not just in, in our communities. You know how many people were in church before COVID? 36% of that number, not 36% of the membership, not 36% of all the people in the community, 36% of the number of people who were here before. Now, if we can go past that, that's phenomenal. But the average will be 36%. Average, that also means that in some churches, Because you know what churches in our area are closing on a daily basis. Churches in the United States are closing on a daily basis. Growing churches, he says, will shift focus from gathering to connecting. Explaining that the concept of connecting with people will overshadow the gathering in any one location. Now, be that the church building or another location or anything like that, that connecting is going to be how we do church. Not gathering. But that's hard because we've always done gathering. That's what we do, right? We're the, I mean, even with the fellowship of churches, we're the fellowship of Christians. We, we fellowship together. We gather together. How do we change what that looks like? Because obviously only 36% of the people are going to gather. We need to figure out how to connect with those other, however many, whatever percent that is. My brain hasn't had enough coffee yet this morning. There will be a split in churches. And that split is between leaders wanting to fill rooms and leaders wanting to fulfill mission. We can't do both in the post-quarantine society. Actually, you know what? We couldn't do it before. We couldn't fulfill mission and fill buildings at the same time. We couldn't do it. We've never figured out how to do it. And by never, I mean no church ever. Either you fill your seats and you have a lot of people, or you do the mission of the church. We can't seem to do both, at least not well, and not in a sustainable manner. He says, if the size of your vision shrinks to the size of a room you can fill, you've missed the church's mission. Wow. 
I want to say that one more time. If the size of your vision shrinks to the size of a room you can fill, you've missed the church's mission. That's something to think about. He also says growing churches will see the internet and building differently. Citing that the internet and its ability to meet people where they are, meeting you where you are, will be the source of equipping people for ministry more so than the building. So instead of gathering people to equip and send out, we gather in a different way to equip and send out. Not to say that you do one exclusive of the other, but it's a shift from having the majority of our stuff be in person, in gathering, in a building, to having the majority of our stuff, of our education, of our Christian discipleship and Christian formation be on. Now, again, I want to remind you, these are not, this is not what I'm saying. This is what somebody who studies this stuff is saying. And more so, if you want more information about this topic, you could look at the Post-Quarantine Church by Tom Rayner. Several of us are, are reading this book right now, and it's got some really amazing information in it. He also says that there were the generational differences, and this is Carrie Newwolf, would, says that the generational differences will become more clear According to one survey, 71% of boomers preferred physical worship as opposed to digital or hybrid church. Only 41% of Generation Z, those are people younger than me, by the way, just saying, uh, preferred physical worship. Everyone other than boomers had a preference for hybrid, a combination of in-person and digital gathering, or digital gatherings. So people who are younger than the boomers, Everybody who is younger than the boomers has a preference or a bend towards a hybrid, both digital and in person, or digital only style of, of worship and discipleship and church. It's an interesting concept. Spiritual entrepreneurship is what he calls apostleship. The apostleship of the New Testament is the, the radical determination innovation and fierceness the apostle paul showed he calls this spiritual entrepreneurship and he says this will be the way of the future spiritual entrepreneurs are the kind of leaders who will find tomorrow's solutions when most leaders can only see today's problem those are the people who will rise in the midst of this post quarantine church post christian church post christian world now, all of that is well and good, but what the heck does that have to do with Abraham? Let me tell you. Let's go back to Abraham, and let's talk about Abraham. We're going to talk about Abraham and how he had a blessing. Abraham's blessing comes to us from Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 through 18. And he is talking about... Uh, his t the, the scripture is talking about when Abraham goes to sacrifice Isaac. And when Abraham goes to sacrifice Isaac, this is something that we can't even imagine, we can't even fathom, we can't even begin to understand. Uh, let me reread this, this piece for us here today. It says, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this, you have not withheld your son, your only son. I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of the heaven, as in the sand and the seashore. We're going to stop there. Abraham took his son, his only son, the, the heir to everything that he had. He took his son to be sacrificed to God because God asked him to. God said, sacrifice your son for me. Now, first of all, Abraham didn't stop. He didn't walk. He didn't, he didn't change his course. He was grieved by the concept that he had to sacrifice his son. But he did what God told him to do, even though it was hard. He did what God told him to, even though it was against everything he believed, everything he ever thought, everything that was typical. 
He did what God told him to. Because he followed God, he trusted God, he believed in God. So when he did that, he got to the point, he told, if, you, if you don't know the story, he got to the point, he went up to the altar and he was ready to lay his son on the altar. And all of a sudden, out of the corner of his eye, a ram came into view. God provided the sacrifice for him so that he wouldn't have to do the unthinkable. So God provided the sacrifice for him and, and he was able to sacrifice the ram and, and give thanks to God that, that he, he did everything he was asked to do and then God still provided. It's, it's insane. The whole concept is insane. And we're not really going to get into what that all is talking about because that's a lesson for another day. But what we are going to talk about is what happened because God, Abraham trusted God. Abraham trusted God. And so not only was Abraham blessed, not only were, was Isaac blessed, not only were their generations and generations and generations of grandchildren and great-grandchildren and everything, not only were they blessed, it says this, and by your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. All of the nations of the earth shall gain blessing themselves. When it says that, we think from the global society perspective. When it says that, we think from the global perspective of, you know, all nations of earth, you know, everything on the other side of the universe, everything all over, every nation. But Abraham didn't see that same way. In biblical times, worldview was very different. Diversity, or lack thereof, was very different. In biblical times, Isaac, would have, or Isaac and Abraham would have thought, okay, so God's going to bless all the people, even those people who are not God followers, that are right over here in this little land right here. They, they still thought neighbor. That was their worldview. They didn't have a global worldview. They didn't necessarily recognize other cultures. It was mostly just the people who lived around them, whether they were God-fearers or not God-fearers. Those were the options. You either are from the nation of Israel or you're not from the nation of Israel. And that was really it. That was the diversity in that time. So Abraham's blessing to Abraham, the blessing that God gives to Abraham, to Abraham really isn't that large of a worldview. But if we take that blessing into context today and know what we know now, know what we know about the world and the global society that we live in, that means a lot more, doesn't it? He receives this amazing blessing for his own family and for his own community and, and his neighbors and the other people over there that we don't really talk to because they're not God-fearers. But the blessing that God gives to the descendants is so much greater than that. Because the blessing that God gives to Abraham is the blessing of all nations. Now that means all people of all nationalities. That means people of all races. That means people of all ethnicities. That means people of all genders. That means people of all identities. That means people of all economic and social status. That means people of all political views. That means those Democrats and those Republicans and those independents who can't make up their mind. That means everybody. That means those people who voted for Trump and those people who voted for Biden. That means everybody. God will bless everybody through Abraham. All those people that we put aside, all those others, think of the people in your life and the people you may have excluded from your life in the past couple months. Think of all of those people that maybe you unfriended or unfollowed on Facebook. Think of all those people who said things that you didn't like, so you just kind of stick them over there. 
God blessed them too. The blessing that God gives to Abraham is a blessing that transcends us. And our small, tiny, little perspective of the world. God's blessing through Abraham transcends all nations. It's not just for those of us who have a good life. It's not just those of us who are right, those of us who are straight, those of us who are home-living, dwelling people. It's for people who are homeless. It's for people who have different sexual orientations than us. It's for people who are Republicans, who are Democrats, who are old, who are young. It's people who are black. It's people who are brown. It's people of color of any color. Anyone who is of anything, all people in all nations, in all races, in all places, all people were blessed through this. And you know what else? All people, even those who don't believe in Christ, were blessed through this. Because all to God means all. It doesn't mean just our corner and our part and our peace and the people that follow God and the people. No, God blessed all people. God blessed all nations. Now in order to, to really get the concept of this one, I want us to go back to Genesis chapter 1 and talk about the image of God. Being made in the image of God. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 through 28 says this. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. A little repetitive, but that's okay. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of sea, the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God made humankind in God's image. All of us are made in the image of God. God didn't say bless all people of all nations except fill in the blank. God didn't say that all people over here were made in the image of God, but all those people over there that don't believe in me, they weren't made in the image of God. All people were made in the image of God. Regardless of what we think, regardless of what we do, regardless of how we act, regardless of what we look like, we were all made in the image of God. So what? What does this have to do with unity? What does this have to do with the, the church in a post-Christian world? What does this have to do with anything? When we look back on the story of Abraham and Isaac, we get the idea that faith is important, first and foremost. Because Abraham had faith in God that God would provide no matter what. So faith comes first. But we also get the idea that all people are wanted. All people are chosen. All people are cared for. All people are desired by God. All people are invited, not just a select few. Not just those that look like us or act like us or, or are like us. I want you to look at your Facebook friends list. And maybe in recent history that's not a good plan. but Because you know, we unfollow and unfriend and all that kind of stuff. But look at your Facebook friends list. And maybe even look at the friends of your friends on Facebook. God loves every single one of them. Even those people that say those things that you just can't stand. Even those people you unfriended and unfollowed. 
Look at your contacts list in your phone. Look at your neighbors when you do walk out the door, even if you do it very carefully. Look at the people on the news. Look at the people who stormed the Capitol. God loves them. Even if we don't agree with what they did. Look at the people standing in the House and the Senate. God loves them. Even if we don't agree with the way that they vote. Look at the person who's sitting in the White House right now. And the person who's going to sit in the White House in a week. God loves both of them. To the very core of their beings, God loves both of them. Even if we don't agree with them, even if we think one of them or both of them or all of them are doing something wrong, God loves them. God desires them. God chooses them. In God's eyes, there is no them. There's just us. All of us have been invited to be part of God's family. All of us have been invited into the blessing of Abraham. All of us were invited to share that invitation with other people in other places. In God's eyes, there is no division. In God's eyes, there's only unity. There's only one body in Christ. Even if we're Methodists and Presbyterians and Baptists and Catholics and non-denominationals and everything else, even if we're non-believers, even if there we're Wiccans, even if we're everything else, Hindus and Buddhists, Muslims, Jews, in all, we are one. We are united in God's eyes and we are equally as important and equally as desired, equally as loved. So this week, as I know, there will be division, continued division. This week, as I know, there will be continued tensions rising and, and anxieties and stresses and people saying, oh, those Democrats and those Republicans. Those people over there that did that and those people over there that did that. I want you to remember that we are one. That only are we one across nationalities and, and diversity and race and gender identity. All of these things. We are one. As one nation. Those people that we keep saying them over there. They're our brothers and sisters. They're our family. We just don't treat them very well. Maybe they don't treat us very well. But as Christians, we are called to remember the blessing of Abraham. We are called to remember that we were created in the image of God and so was everyone else. We are called to make disciples of all. We're called to love, we're called to compassion, we're called to grace, we're called to mercy. We are called. Not to divide, but to unify in the name of Christ. To unify and come together. Even in this post-Christian world. Even in this world where maybe we don't get to gather together as much or as holy as we want to. We are all one body in Christ. We are all in this together. And not the we're all in this together that all the news stations keep saying and everything, all those ads. No, we are truly in this thing called life together. This week, remember that as you see whatever you're going to see. Whatever happens and whatever Manifests in whatever anger and frustration and anxieties and things, remember that we are one. We are united. United we stand. Divided we fall. We are created in the image of God. We are blessed by God. We are called by God. 
to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that Christ has commanded, and remember that God is with us always, even to the end of the age. And that is not just something we say. That is something we are. That is something we do. That is something that is God-blessed, God-willed, God-designed. We are one. Remember that, and may God bless.